I'm not going to say that Frank Drake developed what became known as the Drake Equation by writing it on the back of a bar napkin, but he did do it in a hurry to spark a discussion at a conference that he was about to attend. And it purports, the Drake Equation claims to be a way of helping us organize our thoughts and approach a very, very powerful question, which is, are we alone in the universe? approach this in a very scientific, rigorous, mathematical, physics, astronomy way. Like just taking the the tools of modern science and applying them to this very, very cool question of, hey, is there anyone else in the galaxy that we can talk to? So at first glance, the Drake equation looks pretty straightforward. Your, Your goal is to get N the number of intelligent civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy that we can talk to today if we wanted to, that are potentially communicable, not like a disease, but as in a telephone. And what does this depend on? Well, let's say, following the original Drake equation, it depends on the star formation rate in our galaxy. How often are new stars being born? It depends on what fraction of those stars end up having planets? What fraction of those planets could potentially support life? What fractions of the ones that potentially could support life do develop life? What fraction of those lead to intelligent life? What fraction of those lead to talkative intelligent life? And then how long are they going to be operating So that we have a chance, there's a window where we overlap before we, you know, blow ourselves up where we could actually have a chat. And so on the surface, on the surface, this looks very appealing because it takes this huge problem. This just monumental of like how many alien civilizations are there in the galaxy? And you're like, I have no idea. It takes this big problem and chops it up into a bunch of smaller problems. Hmm. And these bite-sized chunks, bite-sized chunks are a little bit more palatable, aren't they? You're like, well, I have no idea uh, how many intelligent civilizations there are in the galaxy, but I can guess the star formation, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And I can make some reasonable guesses, I think, of, oh, if life were to develop, where the chances of an intelligent species evolving out of that primordial ooze, blah, blah, blah. It, It feels like there's a bunch of small, easily digestible problems. And if we solve each of these problems, if we get a number, 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 we can multiply it all together and then boom, we get a prediction for the number of intelligent species in the galaxy. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. And this is my opinion here. I don't think it's ever going to work. You can either approach the Drake equation rigorously, scientifically, like, is this actually a tool that we use in science with the same weight that we'd use any other equation like Maxwell's equations or Newton's second law or general relativity, or is this a philosophical, let's think about it, let's organize our thoughts, let's get the discussion going kind of thing. I think it fails on both counts. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I think it fails as a scientific equation. And in the next video, I'll talk about how I think it fails as a philosophical way of organizing our thoughts. The Drake equation fails as a physics equation for multiple reasons. One is it's not an equation. I know there's an equal sign in it. I know that it's called the Drake equation, but it is not an equation. If you think about, say, Newton's second law, F equals MA, force equals mass times acceleration, this tells you about relationships. It tells you about how these two totally different things, force and acceleration, are related to each other. And you can flip it either way. You can take it, you can read the direction left or right or up and down, it doesn't matter. If you have a certain amount of mass and you're moving with a certain acceleration and then you hit something that impacts a certain amount of force. 
And if you have an object that's stationary and you apply a certain amount of force to it, it has a certain amount of mass, you can calculate its acceleration. It connects you know, the forces to, to movement, totally different things. This is the purpose of an equation. An equation unites multiple concepts and exposes the relationships. The Drake equation, equation, is just a bunch of numbers multiplied together. There's no relationship there. You're just, you're just taking one thing that you don't know, the number of intelligent species in the galaxy, and chopping it up into a bunch of other things that you don't know. And you're assuming that you understand the relationship between the small problems and the big problem. You're assuming that these numbers just multiply up against each other and then out pops a big number. You're assuming that you have any clue about their uncertainties. And this is a big, big deal. This is a big deal because it's not enough to just come up with a number for one of these parameters. Like, yes, one and a half percent of all planets that could host life actually end up generating life. That's not enough. You need uncertainties on that, fella. You need error bound air bars. You need bounds. You need ranges. You need to state your uncertainty if you're to do a proper statistical analysis. So if I were to say, oh, 50% of all planets that do generate life end up evolving intelligent life, there's a big difference, a big difference between saying that's 50% plus or minus 1%. And 50% plus or minus 20%. That's a big difference. Which means I I can't just estimate the number. I also have to estimate the uncertainty. I also have to understand my uncertainty. So you haven't... You, the, the Drake equation is actually much more complex than it lets on. There's much more that you have to build into your model to get the Drake equation, to actually get a number. And if you get any of those uncertainties wrong, you're sunk. You might as well have not even started. Because you could get every single parameter. We're going to measure this. We're going to measure that. We're going to measure that. Tight uncertainty, tight uncertainty, tight uncertainty. Boom, boom, boom. Get a number and That is our final prediction. If I screwed up anywhere in that chain, not with the value, but in the range of values, the uncertainty in the value. If I screw up, then my answer is way off. My answer is way off. It's wrong. If I think I have a tight uncertainty, but I didn't calculate that right, then that will lead me down to a path for a certain prediction, but the prediction will be meaningless because I got the uncertainty wrong. If I get everything right, but there's just one parameter hanging out with a large uncertainty, well, then that large uncertainty carries the weight. That it's not like all the other small uncertainties, like cancel out a big uncertainty in one of the parameters. No, until you address that big uncertainty in just one of the parameters, then your final answer also has a big uncertainty. You can't avoid it. And... The Drake equation assumes that there is a link between all the parameters. That in order to go from stars to intelligent, talkative species, you must follow a very specific chain of A to B to C to D to E. What if you are missing a step? What if you don't understand a step? What if you have too many steps? What if one of the steps isn't important and you spend a lot of time working on that one parameter, getting an estimate, error bars, turns out to not even matter? Well, your answer's gonna be off. Your answer's gonna be wrong. We can't use the Drake equation as a physics equation because so much of it is unknowable. I mean, look at that Drake equation. The big end, the big number that you're trying to get to, we have no idea. How many intelligent species are there in the galaxy? Well, at least one. More than How many more? We don't know. Okay, let's chop it up into a bunch of smaller bits. Star formation, we can get the, yeah, okay, you know, fraction of planets, uh, current topic of modern contemporary research. 
what fraction lead to life? What like don't know, don't know, don't know, don't know, don't know. And we can't answer those questions using the tools of science currently available to us. We can't. They're unknown to us and potentially unknowable to us because, because this isn't a real equation. Let's say we were to take a full census of the galaxy, a full census of the galaxy, and we were to come in contact with every intelligent species in the Milky Way. Say there's 44 of them. Okay, we now know N, the big number, the number of intelligent species that we can talk to, 44. Does that tell us anything about these individual parameters? No. Because we don't know how the parameters are connected. We don't know how the uncertainties are the parameters are connected. All we know is the big number N. We can't work the equation backwards to once we have an observation to make a constraint on the parameters because each parameter is, is totally independent of the other. Maybe, maybe they're connected. Maybe they're not. We don't know how the uncertainties play out. My main point is that the Drake equation gives the illusion of approaching the topic scientifically. It gives the allure, the veneer of science, but really it's just masking our ignorance. There's no new knowledge. There's no new path forward in the Drake equation. So we can't treat it as a physics equation. We can't treat it as an astronomy equation. In the next video, I'll talk about how we may not even be able to use it as a science equation or as a philosophy equation. Feel free to disagree. I know this is a contentious topic and I'm putting out my opinions here. Feel free to disagree. I'd love to see what you have to say in the comments below. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. Make sure notifications are turned on and go to patreon.com slash pmsutter so that you can keep this show going. And I'll see you next time for more discussions on the Drake Equation.